Compromised data compromises goodwill. Um, obviously, whilst the primary concerns around cybersecurity are, is, is the loss of data, um, for many of our clients, or the reason many of our clients come to us, is because of the inevitable reputational damage that is suffered by the loss of reputation, or, or by the loss of data. Um, as the public wakes up to how much of its data is in circulation, uh, what people are doing to monetize that data, how it is being stored, how it is being transferred, they're rightly waking up to um, an increased or, or demanding an increased level of responsibility on the part of people who are, who are looking after that data. And the media has reflected that. Uh, the media's reporting of data breaches is becoming increasingly vitriolic um, and it being reported in, in rather strange ways that I want to uh, look at during the course of my talk. Um, but it's also being threaded into or wrapped into a sort of anti-corporate, pro-consumer uh, narrative as well that is incredibly damaging for, uh, for organizations. The tone of reporting, as with other, well, as with other corporate crisis reporting, it's not necessarily the data breach that does the damage, but it's the, it's the management of the data breach that, that can damage the reputation. Conversely, a well-rehearsed, well-managed response to a data breach or, or some other cybersecurity loss can also enhance reputation. Um, my approach uh, this morning is simply to go through the, the four stages of a data breach, looking at the way in which uh, the, the reporting changes through those, through those four stages. Um, so with containment and recovery, what's going on? Well, obviously, it's crucial, the, the crucial element is detecting the breach, capping the data loss, um, identifying what data has been stolen, um, and preserving logs and other, and other data for, for a proper thorough investigation. All obviously whilst um, maintaining business continuity. I, I say it just trips off the tongue how easy that is. Um, of course it isn't. Um, and what this does really is, is identify a key tension at this stage in the process, which is um, the cybersecurity investigators are going to want to get on top of as many facts as possible as quickly as possible. How else can they report? How else can they identify the loss? Uh, how else can the, the, the situation be managed? The tension arises between them um, and the communicators who will be and are rightly petrified that the first that the consumers or or whoever else it might be that gets to hear about this data breach is via social media or the traditional media. So the communicators will be desperate to, to break the story first. And this tension um, can be often be the unravelling of, of a, proper, a properly managed data breach situation. So we have this tension between the speed of response that is required and the need for accuracy. And as you would have seen, if you, if you look at the 2013 example of Target, they went out as soon as they possibly can with a figure for the number, of, uh, the, the number of pieces of data that were lost or the number of consumers that were affected, and then had to rapidly escalate that up as they, as, as they found out more. Last autumn, when TalkTalk Talk suffered its, its third data breach, um, almost, I think, probably as a reaction to the way in which Target dealt with it, Again, they came out early without all the facts, and they pitched the, their figure much higher, and then had to, and, and then thought they were in a, um, a more attractive position of, of bringing down the, the, the number of affected parties. A actually, neither um, it, neither is neither engenders the trust of, of, the, of the data <coughs> subjects, um, and it shows just quite how challenging this uh, this issue can be.